subscription. Basically, this gives you access to two exclusive videos per month, exclusive badges depending on how long you've been a member, exclusive emojis, as well as a shout out at the end of every single video. Um, a link to buy me a coffee is also in the description as well. So yeah, welcome back to the channel, guys. Um, yeah, not much is new since I've last filmed. I'm at batch filming again just two today, I think, and then I should have every video for one my way, unless I decide to do an extra day for a channel member video. I just have so many videos to edit already, so most of the filming will be done, and then I want to film in like two and a half weeks, so in that time, I may or may have already hit a thousand subscribers, so if I have, thank you so much for all the support. Um, I'm at 974, so unless that growth slows down to a crawl again, um, even by the time I'm posting this video, because I'm at like a week ahead of videos, or more, not more, this will be like when I'm away probably, um, I don't know when I'm gonna post, it's gonna be a while away, for sure I'll probably have hit 1000, so thank you so much guys, if I've reached that goal. Um, I'm back today with another Irish, uh, facts video, because I never got through all of the one of the other ones, and honestly, because I'm pre-filming so much, and I've other things to do as well, like my run, etc. I don't want to think too much about the video ideas. I'm running out of ideas, like I'm having to film so much lately. So, uh, let's go like, get a break after this, so I maybe we'll have some fresh ideas. But yeah, I'm just going to do a part two of the Irish Facts one. And I have my flag here for you all. <laughs> my Irish flag. I didn't put it in the other one because I forgot about it. I wanted to do it in the thumbnail, but I don't think it looks as good. But, uh, yeah, this is going to be changing the focus on the camera, so. So, yeah, basically, I got this at, I'm going to put it down now, I think, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, um, close to my house, kind of a small one. So, basically, my mom asked, like, who, no, some woman, I think she asked in general, I'm not sure if she asked the woman, but she answered what something meant. There was, like, a show of, like, I'm not sure how the people, but someone fighting someone else, and it was like an Irish language debate on TV about the use of Irish language or something, and they were representing the different sides, so they were like dressed up in the parade, not the actual people, but yeah, so the woman ex was explaining that, and yeah, then my mom actually went in front of a camera person who was trying to like do the parade, and people were walking in front of it, but I didn't want to walk in front of it. So when I was waiting, um, this woman was like, would you like a flag? And I'm like, oh, sure, thank you. So that's nice, you're just handing out some flags. Okay, so uh, Irish has three major dialects. Spoken Irish today has uh, three major dialects, Ulster, Connacht, and Munster. Each dialect differs slightly in vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation. So yeah, certain, like, for example, in Connacht, the Irish boer is road, but boer in, um, Munster Irish, pretty sure it's Munster Irish, is a river. So, if you were saying, like, I was walking down the middle of the road, the middle of the river, it, it's a bit of a difference, you know? Um, so January 6th is known in the Irish language which as uh, Nolignama, uh, Woman's Christmas. So, if you are ever in Ireland on this day, be sure to head out for a few drinks. It was a crazy, fun night. I didn't know that, actually. Uh, in the late 18th century, Cork was the largest exporter of butter in the world. This was mostly to Britain and the British Empire. The Royal Cork Yacht Club was found in, founded in 1720 and is the world's uh, oldest yacht club. Cork Harbour claims to be the second largest natural harbour in the world by a navigational area after Sydney's Port Jackson. The Union Jack was flown for the first time in Dublin on the 1st of January 1801 uh, to herald the Union of Great Britain and Ireland. At its closest point, Northern Ireland is only 13 miles across the sea from the Scottish coast. Didn't know that. On a clear day, you can stand in Antrim, look across the water, and see houses in Scotland. Wow. John 
Mrs. Fitzgerald Kennedy, the 35th President of the United States of America, wore a green tie for photographs when Arlen's ambassador to the U.S., Thomas Kiernan, turned up at the White House with a bowl of shamrock on the 17th of March, 1963. A shiny cloud of rain was spotted on the finger of Shirley Eaton as famous Bond girl Jill Matterson in the 1964 film Goldfinger. The cloud of rain became more popular after its appearance in the film, which also starred uh, Honor Blackman as Bond girl Pussy Galore. So yeah, the cloud of rain is like, it has like, I don't know the exact explanation right now. It's just like composed of different things like the crown, the other things, etc. And um, which way you wear it depends on your like st single status, etc. Marital status. So one hand, I'm not exactly sure. Um, glad around wearing meaning. Um, so you have the two. There's two hands. The glad around represent friendship. The heart signifies love, and the crown is a symbol of loyalty. Together, these four virtues form the perfect relationship. One based on friendship, love, and loyalty. So it's a popular choice for get engagement and wedding rings. So let me see if I can figure out. Oh yeah, so um, apparently there's like four different ways for it to be. So um, the left, if you have it on the left hand, uh, the, f the heart facing inwards, it means you're married. And if you have the heart uh, facing outwards, it means you're engaged engaged to married and if it's on your right hand if the heart is facing inward you're in a relationship and the heart facing outward you're single so i guess that means you know heart facing outward open to love um i'm not sure where the engage is facing outwards i guess there's no other option really left at that point but um yeah so make sure you wear your clatter ring on the right hand but i doubt like someone's gonna be like looking your hand to you know guess your marital status but yeah um i say on the right hand i don't mean the on the right hand i mean on the correct hand for you um there are more mobile phones than actual people living in ireland this was one of those facts about Ireland that completely surprised me, and I mean the the you know author of this article. The first divorce in Ireland actually took place on 17th of January 1997, 23 years after the bill came into effect. Ireland has the lowest divorce rates in Europe and the fourth lowest in the world. Okay, <laughs> one of the most well-known facts about Ireland is that Dublin is home to the world famous Guinness Brewery. Is the largest 
zinc mine in Europe and the fifth largest globally. Still with me, it says, don't worry, there is still more facts about Ireland below. And that's literally number 71, so I'm like, I don't know. Uh, Ireland is the only country in the world where our windmills turn in a clockwise direction. This is true and untrue after fact check-in. is totally dependent on the windmill's motor, but typically more programmed to turn clockwise than in other countries in the world. Um, okay. The Late to Late Show is an Irish chat show. is the world's second longest-running late-night talk show after the American The Tonight Show. Yeah, um, The Late Late Show... It's not, I'm not sure if it's like always on. All I know is the famous one is the Late Late Toy Show, which some people, I think my mom still watches it sometimes. It's, I don't really know the point. Honestly, I think it's just where like kids get to go on the show and like show off different toys, etc. and do different things. Um, so it's like targeted towards kids and kids being on the show, even though it's like later than some kids would go to bed on, but it's not like that late, you know, but yeah. A standard drink in Ireland has 25% extra alcohol than in the United Kingdom, although I guess it depends on the bartender. Ah, oh, yeah. I don't actually know, like, sh I'm gonna say shot size Ireland. Shot size in Ireland. Yes, 35.5 mil, and shot size in the UK is 25 mil. And if you hear anything in the background, I think people are being loud in the background because I don't wear my headphones anymore. I can't know if it's actually making that much noise, but I can't keep stopping every time someone says something. It's, you know, <laughs> too much. I want to get going and go on my run, etc. So, yeah, it can depend on, you know, the bartender, etc. Usually, I think you would measure shots when I was working in pubs to do that, but I was working in the UK in the pubs. But the only time um, it was more generous was when we weren't paying, like, paying for it because apparently, see, after we, I used to work in this place that uh, there was, it was so strange. It was, there was a staff meeting at 12 on a Saturday. Um, honestly, I don't know why we had to, but it seemed like mandatory, but they, you know, told us we were done with our shift, depending on the night, etc. It could be at 10 p.m. So, we had to, like, basically go and come back. Some people lived closer, so they would go home and come back, but there was no point in me. I lived semi-close, but there was no point walking there and back. Like, if I had gone, I wouldn't have come back. So, honestly, just encouraged us to go to the local, the, we call it our local pub, the one literally next door to drink until we get went back for the staff meet and then we we're actually at the staff meet we have dinner at like 12 o'clock at night and because I was vegan there was almost like a vegan, some, a vegan curry they, the chefs made, uh, made sure to have a vegan option and um, then the bartender would and um, one of the guys was still the bartender would still pour drinks and um, he was like a generous pour or whatever so you'd get two staff drinks but sometimes the pour on the drink was kind of generous for what one shot would be you know so he was just free pouring it a bit uh, you know more like he, if he was actually serving it for the customers he might you know do the actual amount but he was just you know uh, anyway, <laughs> Ireland was neutral during World War II. Montgomery Street in Dublin was once the largest red light district in all of Europe. New York City's Central Park gets all the hype about being a huge city park, but Phoenix Park in Dublin is actually twice the size of Central Park. I didn't know that. Is that like the actual park that you walk, or I just know that there's like deer in Phoenix Park. You have to be careful driving near there because sometimes deer is like jump in front of cars, apparently. There's like signs for it and everything. Sports betting is legal in Ireland. Irish citizens can use Anglem. Online gambling platforms that are domestically certified. Is it not legal elsewhere? For sure I knew it was legal. Like, a horse betting is a big thing, I think, as well. Well, does that count? A sports betting? Yeah. There's, like, you know, actual, like, an actual shop about betting, you know. According to the most recent census, there are now more Polish people in Ireland than native speakers of the original Irish language Gaelic. 
maybe has all that surprise, honestly. Ireland was the last country in the European Union without a postcode system. Oh yeah, the air code. We've got that in recent years. Not sure how many years, but it's semi-recent. Whenever we'd say postcode, I don't have to go. We never used to have a postcode. It's kind of weird when you think about it because how are the postman really meant to know? Like say up my road, there's a good few houses, but the house doesn't have a name. So it's just our names. And then the place that like I have a good few houses, but like the, we usually always got the mail because even before the air codes, because the postmans do the same route and they know who lives where, right? Like the last name, like the last name of the house. Uh, etc. And, um, yeah, <laughs> it's just how, you know, people know the postman, basically. But uh, we do have an air code system now, so if you're confused, sometimes it does go to the wrong house. But even now, it goes to the wrong house when we had an air code, you know. So one time I but it's not the postman, it's different, different for, it's different for delivery trucks, so, because, um, I think that's, the good thing because postman they all have the same route but a delivery person you know might only have the address and how would the delivery person know who you are and which house you're in if it's fairly vague i don't know actually how we got our deliveries before the air codes honestly one time like the delivery was to the wrong person and i swear this is when we did have a air code but some it got sent to someone else's house i didn't actually know i don't know where they lived but because the address was right on the delivery they actually drove up to the house and uh, left it here, my package, which was really nice of them. So, yeah, sometimes we get the neighbor's stuff, etc. Um, in 1853, Dundalk man named John Coffey built the Dundalk jail. However, he encountered some financial troubles while building the prison. He ended up going bankrupt and becoming the first inmate in his own prison. Imagine, gosh. The largest town in Ireland is Strada, with 40,956,000 people. 40,956 people, up to 6.2% since April 2011. So yeah, loud, largest town, not largest city, of course, Dublin City, you know. And more Irish people are cycling. In April 2016, 56,837 people cycled to work, an increase of 43% since 2011. And I think that could also be dependent on the cycle to work schemes as well in some places. Until 1985, you needed a prescription to buy condoms in Ireland, by far one of the funniest Irish facts. A motorway in Ireland was delayed by 10 years and then rerouted to project a tree that was thought to belong to fairies. Oh, did not know that. Um, the ball that drops in Times Square on New Year's Eve is made by Waterford Crystal. Did you know, in terms of area, the largest county in Ireland is Co County Cork at 7,457 kilometers squared. The next largest is County Galway at 6,148 kilometers squared. Yeah, I did know that. Yeah, so in area, it's Cork and Galway or whatever. But uh, by population, of course, it is at Dublin. Um, in the 18th century, Cork was the largest exporter of butter in the world. In County Cork, Ireland, there is one pub for about every 500 people. Poke Fair is one of the Ar Ireland's oldest fairs. It takes place annually for three days on the 10th, 11th, and 12th of August in Kilorglin County, Kerry. A goat is ground king for three days and hoisted on a 40-foot pedestal. Speaking of goats, people from County Wicklow have the nickname Goat Suckers. The term was coined because of the goats that frequented the Wicklow Mountains. I didn't know that. The oldest hotel in Ireland is in County Wicklow. The Wooden Bridge Hotel opened in 1608. There is a village in Limerick, Ireland called Hospital. The Irish report the lowest annual number of UFO sightings in Europe. May is generally the driest month of the year in Ireland. Google, Microsoft, Facebook, PayPal, Twitter, Intel, Apple, and many more large corporate uh, U.S. companies all have their European headquarters in Ireland. Ireland is the second biggest tea drinker in the world. This is one of the facts about Ireland I'm sure you already knew. Oh. Is that by population? Because obviously the UK have way more people, so I'm sure they consume more tea overall. But maybe it's like by population. I don't know. In 2004, Ireland was the first country to introduce a country-wide ban on smoking in the workplace and pubs slash 
restaurants. The Royal Cork Yacht Club was founded in 1720 and is the world's oldest yacht club. There is also the longest river in Ireland is the River Shannon. It rains a lot in Ireland, yes, but back in 2007 it rained for 49 consecutive days. Met Aaron as statistics have confirmed 49 consecutive days of rain will fall from June 11th to July 29th. June, July are Ireland's summer months. Yep. Uh, the largest Irish lottery jackpot one was worth uh, 18 million nine hundred and sixty three thousand four hundred and forty one hundred uh, euro and it was won by a syndicate of 16 players who all worked at a concrete plant in County Carlow. Okay. Ireland is responsible for many inventions such as colour photography, whiskey, distilling, ejector seats, guided missiles, Guinness, hypo Dermic syringes, modern tractors, tanks, transatlantic calls, flavoured crisps, portable defibrillators, and rubber soled shoes. Did you know in 1844, Irish man Francis Rind invented the hollow needle for syringes? Did you know in 1928, Irish man uh, Cedric Gibbons designed the Oscar statuette? This is one of those facts about Ireland that surprised me. Um, founded in 1745, the Redonda Hospital in Dublin is the world's oldest continuously operated maternity hospital. Balarney has celebrated the world over for a stone on the parapet that is said to endow with a kiss to the eternal gift of eloquence, the gift of the cap. Irish wolf fans are the tallest breed in the world. Oh my god, there's a picture of like a really uh, the Irish wolfhound and then like a different smaller dog, like a terrier underneath it. Wow, the difference in size. I think it could be a puppy underneath, but like still the difference in size. The official world's shortest St. Patrick's Day parade route is only 98 feet long. It is in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Until the 1970s, Irish law prohibited pubs from opening on March 17th as a mark of respect for this religious day. I might have talked about this before, but, um, in my St. Patrick's Day video, but that's, you know, interesting enough because uh, I used to be banned from opening, and now that's all people do on St. Patrick's Day. Same-sex marriage has been legal in Ireland since 2015. There were 20,389 uh, opposite-sex marriages in 2018. There were 664 uh, same-sex marriages in 2018, of which 372 were male unions and 292 were female unions. There are no female leprechauns. It might sound strange, but throughout Irish history, all images and stories are of male leprechauns. You can learn all about leprechauns, including how big they are. How big they are. Leprechauns in this post. Okay, I don't know. During the Great Famine, or the Irish Potato Famine, over one million Irish died and nearly two million emigrated, dropping the population to about 25%. No, dropping the population by 25, not to 25%. It's quite, yeah, it's crazy. Abortion has been legal in, in Ireland since 2018. You may have heard of County Limerick, located in Ireland's southwest, but strangely there are ten places in the world called Limerick, with eight in the United States, one in Ireland, and one in Saskatchewan, Canada. But yeah, I think these, why there's places named in other places because people emigrated from Ireland to the States and then they've named places in the States after that, I believe. Um, Buenos Aires is home to the largest St. Patrick's Day celebration in South America. Certainly one of the unique facts about Irish people. I feel like these are starting to repeat themselves, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's just me. Every year, 300 plus stadiums, statues, museums, and towers go green to celebrate our St. Patrick's Day. A comprehensive study carried out last year by Bayer found that 56% of Irish people wear glasses in comparison. A further 8% chose to wear contact lenses, meaning that almost two-thirds of the population has an eye condition that requires corrective lenses. And so I wonder if that's like a lot compared to other people other places, I'm not sure. Um, the Wild Atlantic Way is the longest coastal drive route in the world. While the 
ship officially left for America from Southampton in England. Its last port of call was in Gove, County Cork. Um, I think it's a bit like, it's Titanic they're talking about, but that was a bit like unclear, but um, I've done a Titanic video lately, so yeah, they left for, technically they left from Belfast at first, but then they left from Southampton, officially. Sure, if a lot of countries are like this, but yeah, historically there used to be like you know, girl, 
girls, schools for girls, and schools for guys. And, you know, maybe sometimes at the end of the year or whatever, they'd be, like, they'd be semi-close to each other. So at the end of the year, like, on a school dance or whatever, they would, like, you know, invite the boys' school, if it was the girls' school, or the boys' school invite the girls' school to their dance. So it would just all be one gender at the dance, etc. I went to a mixed school, but there are some single gender, there's like a boys' school and a only girls' school, secondary school where I live, etc. But a lot of them are mixed now, you know, but I think it used to be different, used to be only one gender. I think the school I went to may have been an only boys' school at one point, but you know, it has since let girls in, obviously. Um, throughout it, the history changed, yeah. Um, so 50 shocking facts about our land we're going on to the next list. Um, hope there's not too many repeats. So, um, more Irish people are living abroad than there are in Ireland. Yeah, mass immigration means there are 80 million Irish people outside of Ireland, only around 6 million in Ireland. Less than 6 million in Ireland, honestly. Uh, the president of Ireland has very little power. The Taoiseach is the head of the Irish government and controls all the power across the Republic of Ireland. Ireland is known as the Emerald Isle because of its rolling green fields. You know, from all the rain, and like we laugh, but honestly, that's kind of why Ireland is so great because we get so much rain, like it's so bright green, you know. Um, Ireland has hundreds of accents at each town in Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland has its own unique flavor. Ireland has two official languages the Irish langu language, Gaelga, and English. Roughly 2% of people in Ireland speak Irish daily. It's interesting that they're actually saying it correctly in this article. Every Okay, that's an interesting fact for you as well. A lot of Americans or whatever will call the Irish language Gaelic um, for some reason, but you don't call it Gaelic. You Irish people will either say Irish, like, you know, when you're speaking English and you're talking about France, you say French. So we'll say Irish. Or if we're talking, if you want to say the equivalent to saying Francais, uh, Deutsch, you know, and they say in the language, in its actual language, it's Gaelga. It's not Gaelic. Um, though for Scottish, um, it is correct to say Gaelic. It's spelled the same way, I believe, but you have to say the Scottish one, Gaelic, not Gaelic, Gaelic. <laughs> but, um, then, yeah, Gaelic. Okay, that's correct. <laughs> Usually, all, it always says Gaelic. I don't know. And people, like, in other countries will always say, do you speak Gaelic? Especially Americans. <laughs> but, like, yeah, you wouldn't say, do you speak Gaelic? You wouldn't say, do you speak Gaelic? You know, it's perfectly correct to say Irish. Anyway, Ireland's patron saint, St. Patrick, was born in Wales, not Ireland. Yeah, we've been over that. Um, Croke, Croke Park in Dublin is the fourth biggest stadium in Europe. Drinking is an essential aspect of Irish culture. Ireland ranks sixth worldwide in the average consumption of beer per person. The submarine was invented in Ireland by John Philip Holland. I'm not sure if I'm repeating at this point. Yeah, a lot of these are repeats. Do, 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 do. Uh, St. Valentine is actually buried in Whitefriar Street Church in Dublin. A lot of them are repeats of the other flag. Yeah. The Irish flag was inspired by France. However, the Irish flag is green, white, and gold as opposed to blue, white, and red. Uh, it does say gold. I feel like it's more of an orange, honestly. Uh, actually, it's. I feel like it's for sure orange. That is orange, you know. <laughs> People say gold sometimes, but yeah. Um, one of the Ireland, one of the Ireland facts you may not know is that Argentina's navy uh, was founded by an Irish man. Um, Irish surnames start with Mac, it means son of an Irish. Um, surnames that start with O mean grandson of. Yeah. Oh yeah. The whole Euro Eurovision Eurovision thing. It's funny that we we've only won, we've won the most times tied with Sweden now, but we haven't actually won the twenty first century. We only won the twentieth century. So we really need to get some th for this century. Um, Bram Stoker, who wrote Dracula, was born in Dublin. 
in the 19th century. He also attended Trinity College in Dublin. Dracula is said to have been inspired by the Irish Irish legend of Abertach. Um, the Tower Mine in County Meath is the largest zinc mine in Europe and the fifth largest in the world. Uh, since 2009, it is illegal to be drunk in public in Ireland. Yeah, I guess drunk in public. Maybe also drinking in public, but people like still do it, of course. So, because it's cheaper to buy alcohol off a um, supermarket than, you know, in pubs, etc. Or when we, you know, I think that's the main reason. But also because, you know, if we have the rare, nice weather, um, people just prefer to, like, you know, get some cans from a supermarket and drink by the river, etc. And honestly, I don't think the guards really care. It says to be drunk in public. I'm not sure if the drinking is legal. I don't... I think technically the cars can, you know, you know, it is maybe technically legal, but they don't really care unless it gets really out of hand. Especially if we have some nice days in the summer, you'll see all the, all the teeth. Well, if you're 18, yeah, but probably younger as well, but uh, all the people, you know, drought drinking on all the grassy areas around town, etc. Um, near the river, all of that, and, you know, as long as, you know, it doesn't get out of hand, I think the guards have better things to do. The guards or the guardi, um, the police people, police uh, officers, um, we, yes, we call it the guardi.